Whew. Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is a video about basic implementation of a PubSub pattern in JavaScript, of course. Um, well, without further ado, let's just get into it. So we're going to, well, make a class. And we call it PubSub class. Okay, so basically how a PubSub pattern works is that you um, store variables like you have an array and that array stores events you register to the array. Basically that's a push method, you know, you have an add method and that pushes the event and the function you have to the array. And well, if you need to um, emit the event, you just call the um, emit method. So yeah, it's very practical to um, for like, for example, for games, it's very practical because you, you have an event-based system where if something happens, you just call the PubSub class and it's going to take care of all the functions and stuff like that. Um, also, if your program is very big and you have lots of if statements, you can um, use PubSub system to, you know, to delegate some of the functionalities that the, the if statements do you know, to the PubSub system and then free up some code so it's not a big cluster of, you know, spaghetti code. <clears throat> very cool thing, very nice to have um, and it's actually not hard to implement. So, yeah, so we're gonna get right to it. So, next of all, we need to um, have a constructor, of course. And as I said, we're going to have um, an array which is going to hold all of the events we have. We just call this conveniently the set events <coughs> without a nine in it. And as I mentioned, we have uh, two methods, which is add and emit. We're also going to have another one, which is remove. So remove is just there for the sake of if we want to um, you know, later on, remove some events we don't need anymore in the system. We can just call remove and remove that. So now let's just um, yeah, let's just get into the add method, which is the most simple one. So we want to have um, two parameters. One of what is the event name, and the other one is the function. So the way it's going to work here is we're going to have a pub sub. You know, let's just look right here. I'm going to have a pub sub instance, <clears throat> and the way it works is we're going to say pub sub dot add, and then we're going to let's say we have an event called say hello, and then to that event we're going to attach a function. In this case, it's another function, and we're just going to say hello world. All right most basic thing you can do ever and <clears throat> yeah that's how it should work so we are going to um, push that to the events array so we're going to say this to the events of push and now um, I figured out that if you start an object it's way easier to, to um, you know program the other method, so we're going to start a new object now. So we say event name and function. And now the, the object is being pushed to the array. And to show you how that looks, <coughs> um, we'll just console log the instance. And as you can see, we got the events array. And inside of it, we got one object, which is well, a thing we just pushed in. Event name say hello, and then the function. The function here on play code is not displayed correctly, but it's there. I checked that it's working. So now, if something happens and we want to emit that, we can do that too. We just need to say the event name. And then we, of course, we have maybe 100 events and we can't now pick out one of those. So we're gonna just going to, and actually we could, um, but we're still going to stick with the basic folder. So we're going to say for let event of 
it's a for off loop. Um, this is the ends. I'm going to loop through uh, all of the stuff in our array, and we're going to just make an if statement if the event name we right now have grabbed is going to equal the event name we want to emit. We are going to say event.fn and then we're going to uh, call the function. So um, how that works is that basically if we look through it and we get this object and it's, it has a property called event name, you know, event.event .event name. In this case it's say hello and we're going to, by well, the way it works is pops up those. I'm just going to comment that out right now and just say say hello. Now it's going to check if this equals this, okay, this and this. If that's the case then we're going to you know, call the function event.fn and curly brackets. Right, if we do that right now, if I decomment that, you can actually see that, there we go, hello world is being uh, console logged. Nice, that works. So we got add and emit going. Uh, by the way, um, normally if you, for example, watch other targets or um, look at um, different implementations, um, the you know, the, the, there, is, there is also a second parameter which is called args, or arguments for short, which people supply into the function. I'm not going to do it here because, you know, to make it more simple. Yeah, so the last thing we want to do in case we want to remove uh, an event, we have to have a remove method. So. This one actually is a bit more complicated because it's neither a for loop nor is it a <laughs> basic push function. Um, but we still need the, need the event name. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically filter out um, the event we're looking for. So we're going to say this dot events dot filter. And we're going to, you know, it's basically looping through. It's basically a loop um, event, and then it's just an error function event. If the event we grab right now through the loop um, unequals the event name, well, then it's going to throw that out. So it's going to filter away, um, well, the event we are looking for. The problem, however, is if we leave it like this, nothing is going to happen because this event is not being overwritten, so we need to actually assign it like this. Okay, so for example, um, let's say we have a bunch more events registered. Um, we can actually have duplications, that's actually, that's not so good, but it's you can do it. You can do it, but if you want, if you want to not have duplications, that you know, will be your homework to do. Um, let's just uh, define some some different events, and um, let's say, say by, or say hi. Okay, just basic console of functions. By and hi, like this. Um, so now we have three events registered, as you can see. And now we want to uh, get rid of one of those, let's say, um, let's get rid of say by, because nobody wants to say how, uh, by. Um, we can do that with sub remove, like this. And then we're just going to say say by, like that. Okay, and now you can see that that event has been thrown out. Say hello and say hi is are the only events that are left in the system. And yeah, that's about it. That's the most simplistic and basic implementation you can have. It's 21 lines of code. Pretty nice to have. Um, as I mentioned, it's very, very nice to, to use in, in a game because the program is just, if, if it starts to grow, if you need some scaling, you know, some small to medium sized scaling, a pop-up system is just it's just a godsend because event driven 
systems in that case are just way better than you know, procedural. And yeah, thanks for watching.